So I don't own anything for PSA. Let's try some of these things out. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. And this week we are taking a first look at my first purchase from Palmetto State Armory. So if you're not familiar with Palmetto State Armory and you've been sleeping under a rock, which I think everyone in the gun industry knows who they are. They are a company located in the United States, actually in South Carolina, that not only manufactures their own goods, but also distributes other companies' goods. So when you think PSA, don't think just the things I'm talking about here today. Think about anything. You're looking for optics, ammo, rifles, pistols, anything in the entire 2A industry. They've probably got something for you, and it's not just PSA only. They have other people's stuff there. Glock, SIG, Smith & Wesson, the list goes on and on. So I picked up from PSA two dagger frames. Why two? Well, they're different. And I have a couple ideas on what I'm going to do with these. So flashback with me about four years ago when... The P80 Polymer 80 frame was the biggest thing in the market. Everyone was buying them, everyone was building them, and everyone really loved what they had to offer. Then entered in Shadow Systems, where they allow you to buy just their frame, which that's what this is on my favorite Glock here. This is the MR918 pistol frame, which you can no longer buy by itself. You have to buy a complete gun. Then there's a bunch of other companies that came out with other Glock clone frames, SCT, Lone Wolf, um, and a few others. Nomad, I believe, is another one. But finding a Glock clone frame nowadays is hard, especially at a very affordable price. I mean, this frame alone was at least $150, and it's serialized, which I think for some people is a good benefit. Then PSA came out and released the Dagger. The Dagger is a very affordable Glock clone, it takes Glock internals, it supports Glock mags, and it is something that makes getting entry into the handgun field of the 2A community a lot easier and a lot more affordable. You can get a dagger for less than 400 bucks, I think, if not less than that. But I was looking at getting these frames because I'm going to be trying these out with some of my other builds I have, including this guy here, and seeing what I like about them and what I don't like about them. But let's take a look at what I picked up and what our plans are. So these are the PSA Dagger Compact and Full Size S frames. So the main difference is just the length. So this one is your Glock 19 comparable. Glock 19 mags will fit flush. And this is your Glock 17 comparable. So um, the S for this one is that it's got a shorter front. So typically a Glock 17 has a longer slide and barrel but these are both the same size in frame length. So the grip length is just where it's different at, and I'll just turn it around there, you guys can see. So I thought I'd give these a try and um, review them and then talk about our plans for a couple of new builds. All right, so up close and personal with the two different frames, you can see the difference in length. You can see the compact and the full size S or full size small. So initial thoughts on either of them. I don't really care for this mag release button. The ergonomics in hand are really good. I like this little hump here. It kind of changes the grip angle. And I like the little ledge here for like the finger grooves. Has a good design here. The quality of the frame is pretty good. I noticed they did like rolling pins here, not just standard uh, hardware. So that might be fun to remove. But um, this cutout here is interesting. I think I'd probably want to get a magwell in hand. It's a little smaller than I expected, but I think a magwell will clean that up. If we go to the full size S. You can see this is a lot bigger. It's like a Glock 17, same thing. The other thing I don't really care for is the trigger because this is the safety and I don't like curved triggers. But let's get my uh, Glock slide. This is a Brownells Gen 3 Glock 19. 
There you go. Fits perfectly good. Perfect length. But I'm not a big fan of this trigger style. I don't like the curve. I don't like this being the safety because no one really pulls from there. It's usually from the middle there. The trigger pull isn't terrible. Now I have an upgraded plunger kit in here. But... Not a fan of this button though. I'd want to change this, maybe something more recessed, like an extended control. This is fine. This slide release is fine. It's not as flat as the factory. Works just fine. The takedown is the same. You break the trigger, slide it off. If we check out the 17. This is more to my liking. But again, it's the short one, so it's the full size S. See that there, full size or full size S. So it's not the full 17th length. Again, trigger pull is the same. But not a big fan of this trigger. So this will definitely be coming out. That'll be changing here, this mag release button. And then definitely magwells for both, just because, I, I mean, I get the idea, but I can just see mag reloads being a pain. So in hand, the frame feels great. Either, either size feels good. They both have the same ergonomics. Uh, the difference is the length on this one and where the hump begins, I think, is pretty similar. This one is a little bit lower on the 17 and um, kind of fuller here, which fits your palm swell really nicely. It contours there nicely. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying how this feels in hand. I definitely could see you want to get a little bit of undercut work done here and clean this up. The polymer feels, feels different. The quality of the polymer feels different compared to say this. Now I know this has Cerakote on it, but this also has a polish and a bunch of undercuts. But this came like this from Shadow System, so just by comparison, I feel like the Shadow System's undercuts are a little bit better. Yeah, I like those undercuts more, but this is a little bit more straight back of a palm swell here. So there's a little bit of a gap compared to this one that kind of like fits in this groove of your thumb and your palm. Really good. Both are really good. Um, if I'm comparing the length of this one, to the compact, you can kind of see where the shadow is a little bit longer. It's very minor, but you can imagine if you get a magwell for this one, it might complete it. Again, I still fit all my hands, all my fingers here because I have smaller hands. And uh, I feel like everyone has a dagger, so this is not really a new topic, but I don't have one, and if you've been watching the channel, you know I'll be doing mine my own way. So let's talk about what the plans are for both these daggers. So up front, they both need new triggers. I don't like the triggers that come with them. The new PSA Dagger Saber series is coming out soon, and they've already said it's got a flat trigger. They've also made sure that the Saber series comes with a magwell. So I'll just be doing that with these regular daggers. So that'll be elevating them further. Um, I'm going to shoot them stock besides the triggers. Um, I mean, I'll shoot them with the trigger stock too next time I go to the range and I'll get footage of that for my feedback, but I definitely want to look at maybe getting a, uh, Terran tactical kit to kind of make it a little bit lighter, similar to this one and have a lighter trigger pull, um, by comparison, but definitely a flat trigger is needed. Probably going to go with a Timney alpha and then some form of extended mag release, that kind of kicks back a little bit in this area just to kind of support my hand just a little bit. Plus this is really flush and I don't like how flush it is. I would like it to stick out a little bit. The stippling or, or whatever this is here, I guess you can call this stippling. It's almost like, it feels like grip tape or something like on a skateboard. Uh, it could be improved. So I might have someone improve that. Of course, we're going to Cerakote it and we're going to do something unique as usual. And then... I have a 
PSA dagger upper coming. Um, PSA has uh, agreed to send it out to me for a review. Um, I'm going to port it eventually, but it's a completed upper um, slide barrel internals. And I'll upgrade the internals as well to the same that are in here, which is the Terran Tactical Kit as well. Um, and then slap an optic on it of some sort. Hollow Sun, Sealy, Gideon, something, something that runs well. And then we're going to test it out and we're going to compare it to all the other striker fires that I have, especially my, my Shadow Systems build here, actually. Let's just go ahead and put this back to its home. I'll be comparing it to this, my number one striker fire Glock style gun um, with these others. I also have the Echelon coming back. I've got the Hellcat Pro coming back. So I have a bunch of different things to compare it with, some in the same size, some not. But this one being a Glock 17 mag will be 17 mag, 17 round mags, these will be 15 round mags. So it'll be fun to compare this with everything else that I have. In the comment section below, give me some ideas. What would you like to see about this dagger? Daggers are not uncommon. Um, for the record, I purchased these myself and I got both of these as a combo at PSA. Link is in the description below. You can get both of these for a hundred bucks. They're both serialized. So these are about 50 bucks a piece. Both frames for a hundred bucks. So you'll get the compact and the full size small for a hundred bucks and a couple of different color options there. So check that out, see if you like it. Thought it was a pretty good deal. So this is my first um, introduction to PSA, their products. I've, I've been on their website several times. I've looked at what they've had, but just been a window shopper. And I'm really impressed with how they've made their mission to arm the community, you know, support the second amendment as easy as possible. And they are going big when it comes to cutting the cost when it comes to the consumer. And if you've been watching my channel, I've been talking about do what's, what's best for your wallet, what makes sense for you. Don't follow the trends. However, the dagger is very trendy. It's very popular nowadays. And I got a lot of friends talking about the dagger. The PSA dagger. As you can see, a lot of people in my community either have daggers, shoot daggers, endorse the dagger. They like it. So I figured if a lot of people are talking about it. I should at least give it a try and see. I'm not going to let the price point sway me either way. But I'm very confident that once I put my little spin to it, these will be really, really good shooters. Um, and still be at the fraction of the price of either a completed shadow build or a factory Glock um, and be even better at that same price point, if not under that price point. So uh, follow along as we build both of these. I'm deciding if I'll make them two different colors and just have one upper that shares both of them, or if I'll make two independent guns. I'm not sure yet. I have to decide on what the direction is, but either way, that is what's next coming up as we start acquiring parts and installing them. I'll share them with you guys on the channel and let you know how they go. I'll be testing them at the range as well. But the first test will be to hit the range and have these frames with this upper and test it out and just see how these triggers shoot and how everything works as is before I rip it apart because I just don't like the trigger. That concludes this week's video, a preview of my next few build series, the PSA Dagger Compact and Full Size Small. Follow me for more videos like this and if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, if you want some advice, message me in the comment section down below. I reach out to everybody and I comment back as fast as possible. If you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe. The channel is growing. It seems like every single day. And I thank you all for joining me and I will see you on the next one. Peace.